In this video, we're going to be talking about the respiratory exchange ratio or the RER, which is a measurement we often do when using a metabolic cart to measure something like a VO2 max. And it's something that can tell us how much of each of carbohydrates or fats we're using to do the exercise that we're currently measuring. So again, the respiratory exchange ratio or the RER, oftentimes this is just abbreviated R as well, is going to be a measurement that's gonna be done during a VO2 test of some sort. And so it is the VCO2, so how much carbon dioxide is produced, versus the VO2 as a ratio, VO2 being the, how much oxygen is used. So how much CO2 is made divided by how much O2 is used. Doing this allows us, again, to figure out how much carbohydrates we're using and how much fats we're using. Remember, our body doesn't use a lot of protein for metabolism in order to actually make energy. And so... We typically ignore it when we're doing these sort of estimates. Looking at this graph here, the x-axis has the respiratory exchange ratio starting at 0.7, which is typically about the lowest you're going to see at rest, going up to equal to or greater than 1.0, which is what we see at around peak exercise or maximal exercise. And then on the y-axis, we have the percentage of the total energy um, being used um, aerobically that is uh, contributed from either fats as the purple line or the green line, which is carbohydrates. And so you can see the two cross over time. So as exercise intensity is increased, we use less and less fat, more and more carbohydrates. At an RER of about one, we're using pretty much completely carbohydrates. Where at the RER of 0.7, we're using almost entirely fats. And so let's talk about how these calculations work and how we do this. So looking at the RER for fat, and we're going to use um, the common fatty acid, palmitic acid, as our example here, it is C16H32O2. So as we oxidize or burn this fatty acid, we're going to be adding oxygen and on the other side of the equation. So on the yielding side of the equation, we're going to be getting CO2, we're going to be getting H2O, and energy, ATP. Um, and so we need to balance this equation so that we add the right amount of oxygen in order to get the right amount of CO2 and H2O because all these have to be balanced. We can't have any leftover carbons, hydrogens, or oxygens when we do this. So if you balance this equation just right for palmitic acid, you end up with 16 CO2s and 23 O2s. And so if you do that math for the, the R value or the respiratory exchange ratio, remember that's CO2 um, produced divided by oxygen consumed, you end up getting 0.70 the beginning of our scale here where it's mostly fat. If you do the same process for glucose, which is carbohydrate, uh, glucose is C6H12O6, um, you have to add six O2 molecules in order to get six CO2 molecules, and then we'll end up with six H2Os and some ATP, which is our energy. And so you do that same RER equation here, that R equation, the CO2 produces six, the O2 consumed is also six, so six divided by six is one, which is the top end of our scale here, where um, again, we're using all carbohydrates and essentially no fat in order to fuel aerobic metabolism. Notice though here, we have equal to or greater than one on the, the x-axis. So let's talk about how we can have greater than one for an RER. So we, once we hit one, we're using 100% carbohydrates in order to fuel aerobic metabolism. Um, however, we can still produce more CO2 beyond that. And the way we do that is by buffering the acids produced with exercise using the bicarbonate buffering pathway. And so the bicarbonate buffering pathway actually produces CO2 that we breathe off in order to lower the acidity of the blood. And so this is an extra source of CO2 beyond just the regular bioenergetic um, CO2 that we would produce in order to get to that, one, that ratio of one. And so we end up with a ratio above one, which is the reason why a, a true VO2 max is going to have an RER of about 1.1 one or greater because it's going to require us to push ourselves to the point of having a fair amount of acid in our blood and a lot of anaerobic metabolism as well in order to get that true VO2 max. This was just one video in a series of videos on exercise metabolism. I'll put a link in the description below for the playlist to that full series. 
I'll also put a link in the description below to the playlist I've made on bioenergetics, which is how we basically make energy in the body and the various pathways for making energy in the body. And I'll also add a link in the description below to a video where I've shown how to use a metabolic carton to actually measure VO2, which is how you would measure RER as well.